connected to the Amazon forests, most southerly extension and sharing much of the wetland flora and fauna is the Pantanal. It is seen in blue on this map of Brazil. This is an immense geological depression in the Earth's surface through which flows the Paraguay River. One of the world's largest wetland ecosystems, the Pantanal, at the height of its annual flood season, makes up more than 140,000 square kilometers. That's 50,000 square miles. An area the size of Scotland and Ireland put together, or the USA state of Georgia. Nestled primarily in the southwestern part of Brazil, a small portion of it spills over into neighboring Bolivia and Paraguay. The Pantanal serves as a breeding ground for enormous rookeries of waterfowl, many large mammals, and numerous reptile species. In addition, numerous vertebrate and invertebrate species are restricted to this area as well. This savanna grassland area receives its maximum inundation levels as early as February in the north and as late as June in the south, but the extent of flooding varies greatly from one year to the other. This great marshy basin soaks up millions of cubic meters, or yards, of water each year during the rainy season, and it thus helps to regulate flooding in the rivers downstream. During the dry season, it reverts to a grassland savanna, in appearance not unlike that of eastern Africa. The Pantanal's extraordinary diversity and abundance of wildlife are under great threat from deforestation, expanding agriculture, mainly cattle ranching, illegal hunting and fishing, uncontrolled tourism, and pollution from pesticides and chemical pollutants from mining. Our Pantanal Safari adventure began with a four-night stay at the Araras Eco Lodge. The wildlife seen during our stay here will be the focus of the first two videos documenting the experience. One of the most iconic species of the Pantanal is the Jacare Cayman. In Portuguese, jacaré means alligator. Until recently, the jacaré caiman was considered a subspecies of caiman crocodilus. But now the jacaré caiman has been accorded full species status. It is found in a variety of habitats similar to caiman crocodilus. This includes wetlands, rivers, and lakes. The jacaré caiman is often associated with living mats of vegetation. It has the southernmost distribution of all caimans. The jacaré caiman reaches lengths of 2.5 to 3 meters. That's about from 8 to 9.5 feet long. Like the common caiman, the scales of the jacaré caiman have well-developed osteoderms. The less ossified flanks are used in the skin trade. One of its common names is piranha caiman. This is derived from its taste for South American piranha fish. The jacare caiman breeds by constructing a mound nest into which 21 to 38 eggs are usually laid. Peak egg laying occurs during the middle of the rainy season. Females guard the nest during incubation, but this has been shown to be influenced by the effects of hunting pressure. Females in areas of increased hunting pressure are more wary and tend to abandon the nest once eggs have been laid. Hatching occurs in March. The IUCN Red List has the Jacare Cayman listed as least concern. There are about 100 to 200,000 individuals living in the Pantanal. The largest of the South American herons is the Cocoy heron. It is a gregarious species that occurs away from the high Andes from eastern Panama south to central Argentina and Chile. In many parts of its range, the Cocoy heron is the most common and easily seen heron, as it forages in the open and occupies a large range of habitats where there is water.
Commonly seen in the Pantanal, the snail kite is a bird of prey within the family Asapitridae, which also includes the eagles, hawks, and old world vultures. This is a gregarious bird of freshwater wetlands, forming large winter roosts. Its diet consists largely of apple snails, hence the name snail kite. Notice that this snail kite female is holding a freshwater red crab in her talons. The snail kite, as well as a number of other predators of the Pantanal, regularly make meals of these crustaceans. The ringed kingfisher is the largest kingfisher in the Americas. Its heavy, pale-based bill, disheveled crest, blue-gray plumage, white collar, and red belly are visible and recognizable even at a distance. Ringed kingfishers are often conspicuous, searching shallow water for fish from a prominent perch and chattering noisily when disturbed. Singles or pairs are also often observed flying high overhead and giving a loud keck contact call. The jabiru is a huge prehistoric looking stork of wetlands in neotropical lowlands. It has a massive black bill that curves slightly upwards a bare black neck with a large red patch at the base and entirely white plumage. Other large South American storks have black in the wings. It feeds on all manner of aquatic animals, including fish, frogs, snakes, insects, young caimans and crocodiles, crabs and turtles. Feeding birds move about actively in shallow water, splashing with their bill to flush prey, which they then locate using either sight or touch. Notice that the jabiru seen on this nest is attending to two chicks. Particularly in the dry season, the jabiru often gathers in groups at shrinking pools of water, sometimes acting cooperatively to herd fish into the shallows. The huge nest that the jabiru makes is placed in the crown of a large tree and is used for consecutive years, each year growing in size and sometimes attaining a diameter of over two meters, or more than six feet. The jabiru is found in regions with extensive swamps or marshes from Mexico south to northern Argentina. While not migratory, it does disperse seasonally and sometimes is found some distance from its usual range. The great blackhawk occurs in a variety of habitats, but usually is found in the vicinity of water. With regard to diet, it is a generalist, feeding primarily on rodents, bats, birds, fish, crabs, reptiles, and amphibians. And there are also reports of these hawks eating fruit and eggs. The black-collared hawk is a denizen of most fresh or brackish water habitats in tropical and subtropical Central and South America, occurring from central Mexico south to Uruguay. Typically, black-collared hawks perch above shallow pools or marshes and drop onto prey, which most often are fish. As in the osprey, the undersides of the toes of this hawk have spines to aid in grabbing fish. Other prey includes lizards or rodents. The Plumbius ibis is a distinctive stocky ibis of the South American pampas. Adults are uniform dark blue-gray with a bushy crest, a white forehead, red legs, a reddish eye, and a long, decurved gray bill. This species is found in open, grassy habitats, both dry and wet, from Bolivia and central Brazil south to northern Argentina and Uruguay. Singles, or pairs, forage for insects and mollusks by probing mud with their bills. We can note that pairs of this species are also solitary nesters, building a platform of twigs in a tree near water. 
It seems that these youngsters are especially intent on getting a meal from the parent. The Amazon kingfisher is a resident of lake shores and large, slow-flowing rivers from northern Mexico south to central Argentina. Amazon kingfishers hunt fish and crustaceans from a perch, diving into the water to catch their prey and then returning to the same perch before stunning their prey and swallowing it head first. These kingfishers also occasionally hover above the water before diving to catch prey. The nests are excavated by making tunnels into road cuts or erosion gullies near water. Like many other storks, the wood stork is a tactile feeder capturing food by feel. Although this bird can feed visually, tactile feeding allows it to forage in wetlands with concentrated prey as well as in murky waters without depending on sight. The wood stork is a colonial wading bird that inhabits the neotropical region from the southeastern United States to northern Argentina. The species is considered to be endangered in the United States due to degradation of its foraging and breeding habitat. In other parts of its range, such as here in the Brazilian Pantanal, breeding populations of this species appear to be stable. Wood storks feed on a variety of prey items, including fish, frogs, crayfish, large insects, and occasionally small alligators or small caimans, and mice. However, fish make up the bulk of their diet, especially fish ranging in size from about 1 to 6 inches. The capybara is a semi-aquatic mammal and the largest rodent in the world weighing up to 150 pounds and standing two feet tall at the shoulder and four feet in length. As can be seen here, the capybara is covered in reddish-brown fur, although this fur is rather thin. They have a very large block-like head with large teeth resembling that of a beaver. The ears are small and round. Their feet are webbed for swimming. Capybaras breed all year long based on where they live latitudinally. The frequency increases at the onset of the rainy season. Gestation is about 150 days and the young are born mostly in the fall season. One litter is generally the rule. The average litter size is five and ranges from one to eight individuals. No nests are built, but capybaras will seek cover from predators to give birth. They reach sexual maturity at 30 to 50 kilograms, or at about 1.5 years old, and they live for about 12 years. Herds averaging about 10 per hectare, but as high as 200 have been reported. One of the more striking small birds of the Pantanal is the vermilion flycatcher. The male vermilion flycatcher often seeks to initiate copulation by delivering a butterfly or other showy insect to the female. During breeding season, the male vermilion flycatcher performs a spectacular display, fluttering from 3 to 10 meters high, about 11 to 33 feet, above the canopy and singing. It sits and waits on an open perch, locates prey, and pursues it. The vermilion flycatcher often takes prey on the wing, from ground level to a height of about 33 feet. The crested caracara looks like a hawk with its sharp beak and talons, behaves like a vulture, and is technically a large tropical black and white falcon. The crested caracara is the only falcon that collects material to build a nest. Other falcons lay their eggs in an old nest built by another species or in a scrape on the ground. Here we see parent crested caracaras giving food to their offspring. 
As can be seen here, crested caracaras are not shy or reclusive and are generally easy to spot in the open landscapes they inhabit. The South American coati, or ring-tailed coati, is a species of coati and a member of the raccoon family from tropical and subtropical South America. An adult generally weighs 4.4 to 15.9 pounds and attains a total body length of 33 to 44 inches. South American coatis are diurnal animals and they live both on the ground and in trees. They typically live in the forest. They are omnivorous and primarily eat fruit, invertebrates, other small animals, and bird eggs. Coatis search for fruit in trees high in the canopy and use their snouts to poke through crevices to find animal prey on the ground. The hyacinth macaw is the largest parrot in the world and easily one of the most spectacular. It is an enormous bird weighing on average about 3.5 pounds and it is completely blue save for its dark bill and bare yellow orbital ring and stripe at the base of its lower mandible. It is completely dependent on the fruits of a number of palm species and has a necessarily massive bill to aid in cracking the tough exterior of these fruits. Due to its dependence on these palm fruits, its range is necessarily regulated by the presence and abundance of these preferred palm fruit species. It thus occurs in north central and south central Brazil into extreme northwest Paraguay, where it can be found in palm savanna. The number of hyacinth macaws in the wild has declined dramatically over the years due to hunting and trapping. These beautiful birds are also threatened because their habitat is being lost or altered due to the introduction of cattle ranching, mechanized agriculture, and the development of hydroelectric systems. Fortunately, the hyacinth macaw project that was launched in 1990 has been successful in increasing the number of these birds. In 2003, there were an estimated 6,500 wild living hyacinth macaws, of which 5,000 were living in the Pantanal. As a result of the hyacinth macaw project, their numbers have continued to increase in the wild since 2003. We briefly saw the blue-throated piping guan, whose preferred habitat, as can be seen here, is in the tops of trees. The great rufous woodcreeper is a giant among woodcreepers. It is not only large and big-bodied, but has a thick and stout bill. This denizen of Chaco Forest is well-named, as it is big and rufous. Many other woodcreepers have a prominence of rufous coloration, but the great rufus is evenly rufous with little or no markings on that rufus plumage. The buff-throated woodcreeper occurs in lowland forests, often at the forest edge and in taller secondary growth. It usually forages relatively high above the ground, where it noisily rummages through dead leaf clusters and in palm fronds. The throat is buff-colored, but the buff-throated woodcreeper is recognized more easily by its large size, overall rufescent color, and large, strong bill. Some 11 species of brocket deer occur worldwide, and the red brocket deer is the largest of these. The red brocket deer browses on vegetation, preferring fruit when it is available. It is generally solitary and stays in dense jungles.
The Paraque occurs from Texas south through Central and South America to Northern Argentina. It is a distinctive nightjar of open woodland and scrub. The South American tapir is also commonly called the Brazilian tapir, the maned tapir, the lowland tapir, in Portuguese the anta, and in mixed Quechua and Spanish, Sachabaca, literally bush cow. It is one of five species in the tapir family, along with the mountain tapir, the Malayan tapir, Baird's tapir, and the Cabo Mani tapir. The South American tapir is the largest surviving native terrestrial mammal in the Amazon and the Pantanal. Here we see a mother and calf Brazilian tapir. They are enjoying some water here in the evening. The Brazilian tapir can be found near water in the Amazon rainforest and river basin in South America, east of the Andes. Its geographic range stretches from Venezuela, Colombia, and the Guianas in the north to Brazil, Argentina, and Paraguay in the south to Bolivia, Peru, Ecuador in the west. The South American tapir is an herbivore. It uses its mobile nose to feed on leaves, buds, shoots, and small branches that it tears from trees. It also eats fruit, grasses, and aquatic plants. The Brazilian tapir reaches sexual maturity in the third year of life. It mates in April, May, or June. Females go through a gestation period of 13 months and will typically have one offspring every two years. A newborn South American tapir will weigh about 15 pounds and be weaned in about six months. The Brazilian tapir can attain a body length of 5.9 to 8.2 feet. It has an average weight of around 496 pounds. Adult weight has been reported ranging from 330 to 710 pounds. It stands somewhere between 30 to 43 inches tall at the shoulder. The dwindling numbers of the Brazilian tapir are due to poaching for meat and hide, as well as habitat destruction. The Brazilian tapir is generally recognized as an endangered animal species, with this species being designated as endangered by the United States Fish and Wildlife Service as of the 2nd of June 1970. The Brazilian tapir has a significantly lower risk of extinction though than the other four tapir species. Members of the family Nymphiaceae are water lilies. Here we see a Brazilian water lily species that blooms at night. Fertilized by insects. Notice how the plant provides excellent habitat for the tropical freshwater fishes swimming about it. A baby caiman was seen along the water's edge at night. Superficially resembling night herons in the genus Nyctocorax, the boat-billed heron differs in its extremely wide flat bill, whose maxilla looks like the upturned keel of a boat, giving this species its common name. The only member of the genus Cochlearius a crepuscular species, the boat-billed heron uses its unique bill to hunt amphibians, small fish, crustaceans, insects, and small vertebrates while wading through shallow water. The boat-billed heron, unlike other heron species, is very aggressive when defending its nest, 
and young against potential predators. Besides scaring away other bird species and vocalizing loudly, it may even lunge at approaching humans. Here we see one of numerous frog species that occur in the Pantanal. As we shall see, frogs constitute an important component of the diet of many predators that live in the Pantanal. An invertebrate that constitutes an important dietary component of certain Pantanal predators is the red freshwater crab, seen here. The crab-eating fox, also called savanna fox or crab-eating dog, is a South American member of the dog family, the Canidae. It is found in grassy or forested areas, attaining a length of 24 to 28 inches. It stands up to about 12 inches tall. The crab-eating fox has a gray to brown coat that is frequently tinged with yellow. It generally lives alone or in pairs and spends the day in a burrow, emerging at night to hunt for such foods as small animals, fruit, insects, turtle eggs, and fowl. It is easily tamed and is sometimes kept as a pet by indigenous peoples. Let's watch as this individual catches a frog meal. And now we'll see this crab-eating fox catch a much larger frog. There it goes. The adult female crab-eating fox gives birth to one or two litters per year, and the breeding pair is monogamous. The pair ranges the plains together. As a tropical animal, reproduction is not fixed to certain times of year, and takes place twice yearly. The reproductive period most often begins in November or December and again in July. The birth of offspring follows a 56-day gestation, typically in January, February, or sometimes March, then again from September to October. The crab-eating fox searches for crabs on muddy floodplains during the wet season giving this animal its common name. However, it can also eat other invertebrates. Just watch. It has spied a tarantula in the upper right-hand corner of the screen there. See that black spider? It seems, however, that the large arachnid was not on the menu tonight. The crab-eating raccoon, or South American raccoon, is a species of raccoon native to marshy and jungle areas of Central and South America. It is found from Costa Rica through most areas of South America east of the Andes down to northern Argentina and Uruguay. Although the red freshwater crab makes up an important component of the crab-eating raccoon's diet, it eats more than just crabs. Indeed, like the crab-eating fox, it particularly relishes frogs, as can be seen here in this video. The crab-eating raccoon breeds between July and September, and gestation lasts between 60 and 73 days. Offspring are born in crevices, hollow trees, or abandoned nests from other creatures. Between two and seven kits are born, with three being the average. While typically crab-eating raccoons only breed once per year, if a female loses all her kits in the season, they will mate again and have a second litter. Males have no part in raising the young, 
and while attending to young, females will become much more territorial and will not tolerate other raccoons around them. The crab-eating raccoon appears to be better adapted to an arboreal lifestyle than the common raccoon. Indeed, the crab-eating raccoon has sharper, narrower claws. It is also a better adapted for a diet of hard-shelled food, with most of the cheek teeth being larger than those of the common raccoon. Although the crab-eating raccoon can appear smaller and more streamlined than the common raccoon due to its much shorter fur and more gracile build, the crab-eating raccoon is of similar dimensions to the northern species. The greater rhea is South America's largest bird. It is flightless, with a smaller relative, the lesser rhea, restricted to Patagonia and the Andes. As in all ratites, such as ostriches and emus, the males of the greater rhea incubate and raise the young. Males mate with several females, all of which lay eggs in a common nest. This mixed clutch can be sizable. It is not uncommon to see a male caring for 20 or more striped young. The greater rhea is found in grasslands, savanna, or grassy wetlands in southern South America. Much of their habitat is also used for ranching, but more and more of it is becoming cropland, which may be reducing the available habitat for the rhea. Just before dawn, we encounter a capybara adult with three babies. Capybaras produce a litter of four individuals on average, but they may produce between one and eight in a single litter. Birth is on land and the female rejoins the group within a few hours of delivering the newborn capybaras, which join the group as soon as they are mobile. Within a week, the young can eat grass, but continue to suckle from any female in the group until they are weaned at about 16 weeks. The young form a group within the main group. Alloparenting has been observed in this species. We see a jabiru pair on their nest. The black striped capuchin, also known as the bearded capuchin, is a capuchin monkey from South America. It was the first non-ape primate in which tool usage was documented in the wild, as individuals have been seen cracking nuts by placing them on a stone anvil while hitting them with another large stone. Adaptations to carrying large stones and fruit include strengthened back and leg muscles that permit the monkey to walk on its hind legs while carrying stones. Azara's agouti is a South American agouti species from the family Daisyproctidae. Found in Brazil, Paraguay, and Argentina, it is named after the Spanish naturalist Felix de Azara. The population is unknown and may have gone locally extinct in some areas due to hunting. It is listed as vulnerable in Argentina. Despite being active during the day, Azara's agoutis are quite difficult to study as they are naturally extremely shy and will flee and hide when humans approach. Their shyness may be related to their solitary lifestyles, but may also be due to 
after having been preyed upon by many carnivorous species, including humans. The various species within this, the Paroaria genus of cardinals, are actually tanager finches, quite distantly related from the true cardinals in the family Cardinalidae. The yellow-billed cardinal seen here is not a crested species, so other than having red on the head, there is nothing very cardinal-like about it at all. The bright coloration and beautiful song of the yellow-billed cardinal has made it a prime candidate as a cage bird through parts of Argentina and southern Brazil. It has also, interestingly, been successfully introduced to several of the larger islands in Hawaii. The bare-faced curacao is distributed from eastern Amazonia south through central Brazil into Paraguay and northern Argentina. It forages on the ground in forest and forest edge where it can be fairly common. It is easiest to detect in early morning and late evening when individuals or pairs wander into clearings or deliver their deep booming songs. Like other Crex curassows, this species is sexually dimorphic. The male is mostly black with a white vent, while the female is barred black above with orange to rufous underparts. The bare-faced curassow is the only curassow with extensive bare black skin on the face. The striated heron is found in both freshwater and saltwater marshes from eastern Panama south to northern Argentina. The striated heron is often encountered foraging alone in the dense vegetation along bodies of water. The chestnut-eared arasari is an arasari that is native to central and southeastern South America where this lowland species inhabits western Brazil, north to eastern Colombia, and south through eastern Peru, northern and eastern Bolivia, and northern Argentina. Arasaris generally roost socially throughout the year. Up to five adults and their fledged offspring sleep in the same hole with their long tails folded over their backs. The chestnut-eared harasari has the widest distribution of any harasari species and is one of the most common toucan species. They typically nest in trees with appropriate hollows, most of which are previously made by woodpeckers. Other hollows are the result of a branch break and ensuing rotting of the heartwood from rain over a period of time. Both the male and female share the incubation and chick rearing duties. Their eggs are white and elliptical shaped. The eggs are incubated for about 16 days. The newly hatched chicks are blind and naked with short bills and thick pads on their heels to protect them from the rough floor of the nest. Comfortable, okay, very flexible. Sometimes like this is not good because you have a little bit of like of this. your knees. Mm -hmm. And go, go to the right, move like this way, stop, shh, to the left, like this, stop, okay? Some... Rufus-tailed Jacamar is a beautiful inhabitant of forest edges and clearings of Central and South America. 
Rufus tailed Jack and Mars feed almost exclusively on flying insects, especially dragonflies, butterflies, and moths. Though diligent and quiet, observers may encounter this reclusive heron standing still along sluggish streams and backwater swamps. The Rufus and Tiger Heron generally is the least frequently encountered of the three species of Tigrasoma, and it is considered uncommon to rare throughout much of its range. As might be expected of a species that spends most of its time by the water, much of the Rufus and Tiger Heron's diet is aquatic based, including fish, crustaceans, water beetles, and dragonfly larvae. And here we encounter the bare-faced curassow in a more forested area. gray-headed tanager is the only member of the genus Eucomedus. They have adapted to several different ways of life and habitats. Their diet includes fruit and insects, and they are known to follow army ant swarms to feed on insects escaping from the ants, particularly north and west of the Andes. Here we see a jabiru stalking the wetlands for a meal. The American pygmy kingfisher is sparse, though perhaps often overlooked, throughout its range in tropical lowlands. They are found along quiet streams in forest interior, as well as flooded varzea and swampy edges of lakes. The lineated woodpecker is a large crested woodpecker widespread in forested habitats in the Neotropics. It is black overall with a brilliant red chest, white barring on the underparts, and a white line extending down the neck. Males have red on the cheek, while females do not. The lineated woodpecker communicates through vocalizations, drumming, and rapping, especially during territory defense. The vocalizations are distinctive and the sustained laughing call is a common sound in many areas. It often occurs in pairs that feed on wood-boring arthropods by hammering deep into trunks. Lineated woodpeckers also include fruit and seeds in their diet. They lay clutches of two to four eggs in cavity nests, which are excavated in dead trees by both parents. Lineated woodpeckers are not globally threatened.
And so we are near the end of our part one presentation of the wildlife of the Pantanal. And, appropriately perhaps, we finish up with this iconic species, the hyacinth macaw. Some of the threats that are challenging the survival of the hyacinth macaw in the wild include very heavy trapping for the pet trade, some local hunting for food and feathers, loss of habitat for hydroelectric dams and agriculture. All of these are contributing to the potential extinction of this species in the wild. However, as we noted earlier, their numbers are up from 2003 when it was estimated that only 6,500 hyacinth macaws were still living in the wild. The hyacinth macaw is currently listed as threatened on the IUCN red list. The majority of the hyacinth macaw diet is Brazil nuts from native palms such as Akuri and Bocaiuva palms. Hyacinth macaws have very strong beaks for eating the kernels of hard nuts and seeds. Their strong beaks are even able to crack coconuts, the large Brazil nut pods, and macadamia nuts. Hyacinth macaws also boast dry, smooth tongues with a bone inside them that makes them an effective tool for tapping into fruits. The akuri nut is so hard, the parrots cannot feed on it until it has passed through the digestive system of cattle. In addition, they eat fruits other than vegetable matter. The hyacinth macaw generally eats fruits, nuts, nectar, and various kinds of seeds. It is notable that limited tool use has been observed in both wild and captive hyacinth macaws. Reported sightings of tool use in wild parrots go back as far as 1863. Examples of tool use that have been observed usually involve a chewed leaf or pieces of wood. Macaws often incorporate these items when feeding on harder nuts.